with their beeps. It's Sunday morning and sales, considering the weather, has been actually all right. Has been, have been all right. Um, we've got nine, ten orders to show you. So now a couple went out yesterday that I had to get packed up and shifted, so I don't have them to show you. But there was nothing crazy spectacular. But today there's a couple of slightly more interesting bits and pieces. So let's let's show you what's going out. First up, we've got three Ian Banks paperbacks. Just try to decide where to stack these up. Let's put them here. You can't see what I'm talking about, but they're down there. Uh, three Ian Banks paperbacks, twelve ninety nine. That was a nice start. We've got ten Disney DVDs. All fairly bread and butter, isn't it? Uh, what am I selling my DVDs for these days? I can never remember. Sixteen pounds forty nine for the ten of them. So that's all right as well. We have down here somewhere Henry James Vintage Classics Turn of the Screw, excellent condition, lovely black inked edges, four pounds twenty five. Then we've got three Sherry Le Pena hardcovers, pre-made bundle, twelve ninety nine. Followed by a bit of a big bundle, this one. Yeah. Ten Jodie Bacall paperback books. Uh, nice big bundle. I like it when I sell big bundles like that. Means one lot of packing. And the ten of them went for a spectacular twenty two ninety nine. So, considering what I pay for them, what it'll cost to post, that's quite a good little sale as far as I'm concerned. And next up was another pre-made bundle, although it's actually more of a set. Uh, and it is The History of the LMS by O.S. Nock, Volumes 1 to 3. So this year, so, you know, very specific interest books. I can't ever see them in the right price. I will pick them up. You never know what they're going to be worth, unless you look them up at the time, but I never do, because I can't get reception. Uh, but 10 99 for the three of them. So, very good. And then we've got Vox, The Edge Chronicles by Paul Stewart and Chris Riddle. Riddell? Riddle? However you want to say it, Chris. You can say it that way. Uh, hardcover. I've got, I think there's three I've got in the set of this, and that's one that's gone. I picked this one up because I do like the cover. It's nice. Not quite Terry Pratchett art, but it's definitely veering in that direction. Um, so yeah, that one there, £4.25, nothing spectacular. Followed by another, nothing spectacular, £4.25 for a copy of The Return of the King. Quite a nice little copy, but it is, I think, a bit of an ex-library book. Yeah, ex-library, so I priced it down a little bit just because it's got that type thing going on. Library, books, you know what I mean. 425. And then another £4.25 book. Healing Touch, a complete guide to the use of touch therapies to promote well-being. Let's see, 425, uh, it will go large letter, which is quite good. A few of these will go large letter actually, so that saves me a wee bit in postage and makes the £4.25 actually profitable. This one went for £4.42 and it will also go large letter. So, a vintage map of Loch Doon from 1945. It's in not bad condition actually. Uh, picked it up a wee while ago, just a curiosity more than anything else. Let's see, £4.42 for that one. And that's it. I've had another couple of orders coming through, just whilst I was getting set up for this, but I haven't picked them yet, so I'll show you them at a later point, but I'm going to go and get this lot packed up. But one thing I did want to talk about, tell you about, um, I had mentioned I was looking for cheaper postage alternatives, so I've been in touch with Every about seeing what the requirements were to set up a business account, and hopefully get a few pence saving, especially on the under one kilogram packages, to see if it makes it more worthwhile selling all of these single books. So it took a few days, but it came back to me with a quote. And it's a funny old world, isn't it? 
they actually want more to send it with, as a business account through them. This is their discounted rate than what you pay through eBay or even directly through their own site. So excluding VAT, it's like £2.45, I think, that you pay for their smallest packages, if you get it through eBay, for example. But their offer was £2.69. So I said, thank you very much, but I think I won't bother as I can get it cheaper just buying them all direct. Uh, it, if the volume was massive, I'm sure that might come down a little bit. Um, and that really is just meeting their kind of minimum volume requirements, like 150 parcels a week. So no, no savings on that whatsoever. If anything, it would be 10% more than what I'm paying just now and would eradicate any profits selling these low value items. So I thought that was quite funny. That's, that's how businesses want to bring you in by charging you more than what you're already paying and calling it a deal. I don't know. The only plus of that is that there would have been Monday to Friday pickups at that kind of hour time slot that I would have suited me. So that would have been a slight convenience. But to be honest, the I've got a choice of places to drop every parcels off and every single one of them is on the way to somewhere else where I go every single day. So for the sake of a, you know, one minute detour to go and drop off, you know, in and up to 20 parcels, it doesn't take long to go scan beep, scan beep, scan beep, scan beep, then paying an extra 10%, just not worth it at all. Ridiculous. So I thought that was quite funny. Um, if anyone else has been trying to get that, I'd be curious to know what they're coming back with. Is it where I am? Is it some other thing that's causing that? Uh, I don't know, but I, I thought that was quite amusing. They want more to get their discounted rate than they do just buying it direct through eBay. Very, very, very strange. Anyway, sales, not bad today. Uh, not bad, sorry. Yesterday they weren't too bad and a couple have come through this morning. I did expect it to be really, really, really slow this weekend just because of the weather. I mean, it's, it's even up here, north, it's been really, really nice. So, yeah, it's it's kept ticking over, which is quite, quite good. Uh, gets rid of the worries there. Also, did anybody see the Northern Lights? The Aurora Borealis, Aurora Borealis, let's say it properly. Uh, the boy came downstairs at like quarter to midnight going, oh man, you look at the sky. Everyone says it's purple. So we went out the back and it was quite spectacular. Um, I tried to take a couple of photos. They didn't come out very well. He took a couple of photos and they came out amazing. So I'll stick a couple of them up here somewhere just so you can see what we saw here. How was it for you? But I mean, it's, I've never seen that before. Uh, definitely never seen that before. I've been to dark sky parks and all sorts of things and seen some spectacular stuff up in the sky but never seen anything like that it really was quite stunning so i hope everybody else got to see it and we'll now go and read philip pullman just in memory of the northern lights that we got to witness somebody told me that it was also called steve solar thermal something and steve seeing steve in the sky sounds a bit better than the aurora borealis but i don't know if there's a difference between the two things if anybody knows let me know and we'll see where it goes from there anyway that is all for now. Um, I'm going to do a wee bit of a pickup shortly. So if there's anything good and interested in that, I'll come back and show you. Plus maybe another couple of sales if they do come in during the day. And then this will get uploaded for you to watch. So I'll see you in a little bit. So we've made it to Sunday afternoon. No more sales. There was the one that had come through just as I was filming earlier on. Um, the Chocolate Girls... War, war time for the chocolate girls, something like that was called. A wee 425 sale, I've already packed it up and it's done. Um, thought I might have had another couple of things to show you, but I don't from that point of view. But I have been out, done a bit of a pick up, uh, 300 books, so a reasonable size haul. Um, but very few bread and butters out of that lot. Maybe only 40 or 50 books that are for that. The rest, there's a couple of interesting titles, but I've not done enough with them yet to be able to share but um the shop had taken a delivery from amazon so they get donations from amazon old stock they're clearing out 
and it's, it's the normal price to buy it from them. But what it means is you get an awful lot of the same title. So I was able to go out and pick up, you know, like 200 books, um, but only 10 titles or so across that whole lot. So I could put up lots of uh, multi listings, which is absolutely ideal. There's nothing in it that is like crazy valuable or anything. They are all just kind of bread and butter titles. But I thought I'd just share a few with them, show you what's been coming through. Um, this isn't the full selection, but it gives you an idea of what people would pick up. And some of these I've got a dozen, some I've got 20, some I've got three or four. It all kind of varies. Um, and I have just realised I've not sorted out my microphone. And now I have. Hopefully the sound's a wee bit better. Right, a dozen or so of these, The Flat Shear by Beth O'Leary. So they're all like brand new books, which is excellent because it means I can list them as new or like new. Um, we've got that one by Jonathan French. This is the third in a trilogy, as far as I can tell. Uh, lots in the back shouting about it being like Joe Abercrombie. So, yeah, I might keep a copy of that for myself. But I've got six or seven of those. Again, bread and butter prices. We've got a wee double pack some Furies, Tyson Fury and Paris Fury. Um, we double it and they seem to sell reasonably well actually. I got about 20 of these so that was absolutely cracking. Uh, yeah, but again, bread and butter prices all the way. Also, I've got a wee stack of Ian Banks, the Hydrogen Sonata, so all the same. I've not read this one. Uh, I do love Ian, M Ian, M Ian Banks is great. Ian M Banks, the sci-fi stuff, the, the culture. I've not read that one, so I'm keeping a copy for myself, but that leaves me with four or five of them. And again, bread and butter price, not bad at all, because it's a big multi-listing. We've got Blue Hour by Sarah Schmidt. Uh, don't mind about it, some sort of thrillery type thing. Might sell for a few quid, it might not, but again, I've got a nice wee stack of those, so it's a multi-listing regardless. And the last one to show you here really is The Last Winter. So some sort of eco book, The Scientists and Adventurers Try to Save the World by Porter Fox, the author of Northland. And again, I got probably a dozen plus of those. So it was a different pick up today, but definitely one worth doing. That lot, all the, the multi-listings I'll be able to put up from that, it's it's going to be about twelve, thirteen hundred pounds worth of listing value, which is fantastic. Because a lot of them are in new or as new condition, that means there's an extra wee bit of value in them, assuming I can sell them. Um, so it really bumps up, you know, the beast that is the eBay shop. So that was that was really good. I did get some bread and butter bits and pieces, you know, the usual odds and sods to get listed. Uh, picked up one for myself. Well, two for myself if I count a copy of that one, but I'll be talking about them in another video. And yeah, a couple of interesting titles. Another copy of Prince Harry Spear, but just every time you get that, it just sells. It's great. It's not worth a fortune, but it's a guaranteed couple of quid coming back in every time you find one. Uh, a wee Folio Society set of Jane Austen, which was nice. You see one of them, you think, ooh, there's going to be more. There wasn't, it was just the one, but a wee three book set of that. So again, that's a nice wee extra bit of value instead of it being a five six pound book they might sell for 15 20 i don't know I haven't I haven't done any research on them yet but that could be the extra wee bonuses that work out so about about 100 pounds spent on about 300 books not the cheapest but considering what i was able to get more than happy to pay it and keep it all selling on anyway i think that is going to be all for today um let's say no more sales to share or show which is a shame but it's such a lovely weekend why would people be spending their time buying stuff on ebay when they can be out enjoying the sunshine doing the garden at the beach whatever it is you do on sunny days which is what i'm going to go and do now i've done my pickups i've done my packing i've sorted out what's come in so that it can be listed but that'll be tomorrow uh now i am going to go and get the messages and then go and sit in the garden for an hour or so and read my book, which is what everyone should do all of the time. All right, I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.